Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this handy laptop case. Um, not only have you got pockets on the front that you can keep your pens, your mobile phone, uh, maybe a diary or a notebook in there. On the inside here, you've got a really nicely padded case which fits your laptop. Now, I will explain throughout the course of the video um, how to measure for your laptop and how to give yourself a little bit of leeway because maybe fitting zips like this is something that you haven't done before. So I don't want you to make any mistakes. I want you to be really pleased with the project that you're making. But if you wanted to see exact measurements for all of the materials and everything that I've used, do take a look on the Create and Craft blog. But let's have a look at the materials that you need and then we'll get sewing. I've cut two pieces of outer fabric and two pieces of lining to the same size and on the back of the outer fabric I've used some wadding, you could use fusible fleece, that's entirely up to you. But you do need a little bit of padding on here to help to protect your laptop. And these pieces measure an inch larger all the way around than the size of my laptop. So if yours isn't exactly the same size as mine, you could make it smaller or you could make it larger to fit. Then what I need to do just put that down and round off the corners at the top of the bag. Now you can do this by eye, I'm doing both of them together, just a gentle curve or if you have something like a, a bobbin spool or a ribbon reel you can use that as a template. But I'm literally going to snip around the corners like so and then I'll use these pieces as a template to do the same with the lining. So they're all the same shape. You're going to find it easier to fit the zip around a curved section at the top than you would be if it, was, um, if it had corners. So that's why we do this. So before I make up any of the other sections, I'm going to add my pockets to the front of the bag. And these can be in any size you like. And you can make as many dividing lines as you like as well. So we, we need this to, to suit you and what you need. So mine measure eight inches deep and I've got two pieces of denim for the big pocket. And then six inches deep two pieces for the smaller pocket and they're the width of the actual case that you're making. So I'm going to sew both of the pockets right sides together just across the top and the bottom to make a tube. And we'll turn these two the right side out. And give them a press. And if you wanted to add another smaller pocket across the front, then it's simple enough to do in the same way. Or you could put pockets on both sides instead of just on the one. I like to make things personal for you. So let's just arrange these so that the seams are sitting against the top and the bottom and press and I'll do the same with the denim pocket so just Open that out, arrange the seams and press. And then I'm going to edge stitch across the top seam of both pieces. So I can increase the length of my stitch to, let's say, a three. Because this is just a decorative stitch. It's a finishing touch. And so. So let's snip 
these off. Then I'm going to lay one panel on top of the other, right in the centre. You can measure that to be precise if you wish. I'll hold it together with a couple of pins. And then I'm going to mark the centre point just with an erasable ink pen. But I'm not going to sew the dividing line at this point. I'm then going to mark the centre of each side and again draw a line down here. This is where you can make your dividing lines as wide or as narrow as you like. And we'll do the same distance from the centre on that side. So my pockets are going to be symmetrical and even. So I'm going to sew straight across the bottom to secure the pocket and then down the two outer lines, that way up. And just make sure when you get to the top you're going to do a few back stitches because that's that'll strengthen the seam on the part of the pocket that may be under the most strain. So let's sew across the bottom first of all. The stitch length can come down again to 2.4 or whatever the standard stitch length is on your machine. pockets instead of patterned like mine you could maybe put um, a little bit of applique on here uh, maybe some initials would be good particularly if this is going to be used for school or college so again just reverse backwards and forwards a few times at the, at the top of the dividing line and the same along the other pockets as I said previously if you wanted to add more dividing lines to make smaller pockets you can do that now So now my pins can come out. And this pocket will go over the front of my bag. Again centrally. And this time I'm going to sew across the bottom. I'll put a few tacking stitches in the side just to hold the pockets together while I sew. And then the dividing line goes all the way through both pockets there. Pin this in place if you like. So again, dividing line straight down the centre. And just a little row of tacking stitches to hold the side pieces together. That makes it easier to sew when we start to construct the back. Instead of pinning. So there we have it. So I have two large pockets in the denim fabric and four smaller pockets in the pattern fabric on the front. So let me trim down this pocket because it seems to have grown at the back here. and then we'll make up the zip section. Now I've got quite a long zip on my bag because I wanted it to open right up so I can get the, um, the laptop out easily and maybe anything else that I'm keeping in there. So my zip actually measures 27 inches which brings it all the way down to about 4 or 5 inches from the bottom here. If you wanted to put a handle on the bag, then I suggest you keep your zip shorter because at the moment uh, the weight of it will bring it all forward. So you need the weight to be taken higher up the bag. But I'm not worried about a handle on this. It's more of a, more of a case than a bag. I've also measured two lengths of fabric, again in the denim, so it's nice contrast. 
and I've put the wadding on the back of there, fusible fleece, whatever you're using. And I'm going to sew these right sides together across the top of the zip. And this is a continuous zip, so I can move that slider right out of the way. Put my first piece on there, let's sew it from the zip side. And sew straight down the centre of the zip. Now you can put your zipper foot on the sewing machine if you prefer. I find with my machine I don't really need to, so maybe try. By the time I've taken my um, regular foot off and put the zipper foot on, it's, I, I could have sewn the zip in, so I don't normally bother. And again, just lining the edges up down here as I'm sewing is a lot quicker than pinning. Now I'm just coming up to the slider of the zip and I don't want my stitches to go all wobbly as I manoeuvre around it. So I'm going to lift the foot up as high as it'll go and then with the needle down and then manoeuvre that slider so it's out of the way. Foot back down and carry on sewing. Then I've still got a nice straight line. Then I'll turn the whole thing over. And that's what we have so far. And then the second side of my denim panel will go on the opposite side of the zip. And again, just sew straight, straight down the centre of the zip tape. So not too close to the teeth. Or the coil, I should say. Move that slider out of the way again. So there's my zip sitting nicely in between the two pieces of denim. It is trying to fight back a little bit against me, so I'm going to press that. And to hold the denim in place, I'm just avoiding the, uh, the coil. They don't normally melt, but could do. Um, yeah, just to hold it in place further, I'm going to put a, a line of top stitching just against the edge of the seam. And that'll give a nice professional finish, but it, it also serves the purpose of keeping the fabric flat. You can see how it wants to fight back now. That's because it's a thick fabric. And, of course, we've got the, the wadding on the back as well. So just press open, keep it in place. And then we'll sew. Um, with continuous zips like this, a lot of the time you can put two zip pulls on there as well. So you can have them coming towards each other, which might be quite useful. That means that you could even put a lock on it if you wanted to. Okay, so a little bit of a longer stitch. And we're just going to stitch along both sides of the zip. So there's the finished zip panel. And you can see how much neater it looks now we've got those stitches either side. So the next thing to do is to take your pieces of ribbon. We're going to fold those in half. Oh, we need to trim down the edges of these panels first to make them nice and square. That's not going to affect these going into the bag, so don't worry. This goes over the end of the zip like so. And I'm just going to sew within the seam allowance. Don't worry about sewing over the zip. Just Take it slowly. It's all right with um, nylon zips. If that's a metal zip, that's a different kettle of fish. I wouldn't even bother trying to sew over it. So again, let's trim the end of this down so that it's straight. You could use your rotary cutter ruler and mat for a perfect uh, straight line. Fold that over, up against the zip, and sew. Now then, let's make sure this is going to fit your bag. So take the front or back panels. We're going to fold this in half. And you can make a chalk mark or pop a pin in the halfway mark. And do the same with the outer bag. So we're marking the centre basically. Whoops. 
There we go. And then line those two marks up. Bend the outer, there's no need to pin this all the way around, but bend this around the outside. This doesn't have to be precise at this moment. Then you're going to measure this section here and then add an inch to it and you'll need two pieces of fabric. So I've already cut mine. These are three inches wide. The width of your zip panel should also be three inches wide. If it's not, you can trim the zip panel down so that these are exactly the same width. It may vary on, on the width of your fabric, depending on the width of your zip. I've got a particularly wide zip, but when I cut my fabric to the right size and then hemmed it, I know that it's going to meet that three inches mark. But if yours is a little bit wider or a little bit narrower, either trim down this or trim down this so that they're both the same size. So again, when this wraps around, it finishes here. Cut the fabric to the length of the, uh, the front of the bag and then add an inch. And this way we know that if there's any leeway, you haven't cut it precisely. We can still adjust that. And then these end sections are going to be sewn right sides together over the top of the ribbon ends. And to help keep it flat and to keep it neat, I'm going to fold the denim back and top stitch across here. So it matches the stitching around the zip. So that's how we're looking. We'll do the same on the other end. So right sides together. So across the zip. And fold it over, top stitch across here. So that's my zip panel finished. Now we need to sew this together with the bag and start const constructing the whole bag. So I've already marked the centre point. I'm actually going to draw a line across there so I know exactly where that centre point is. So I've got the marks on both sides. I'm going to do the same with the outer bag. Just double checking my pin was in the right place. So this time just put a marking so I can take the pin out. And I'll do the same with the opposite side of the bag, with the back of the bag. So I've got the centre point of all the pieces that I'm going to sew together. And now, starting at the centre, from the marks that I've drawn, line those up and I'm going to pin them. You could use clips if you wish. So pin around the curve and I'll do that all the way around both sides. That is going to be too long, as I said, that's absolutely fine. And then we'll sew all the way around. So there's the first side of my bag finished. I can turn that to the right side out and you can really start to see it coming together now. The second part of the bag is sewn in, in the same way. So I've already got my markings. Line those up, pin and then sew. Now just before I turn this the right side out, I need to put the base in, but I also need to trim off the excess of the side panels. So I can just cut straight across here now. But this way I can ensure that um, all the panels fit perfectly. Right, now we'll sew the bottom in. So when you're sewing this in, 
we're going to align the edges together but overlap this seam in the, in the side by about a quarter of an inch and start sewing a quarter of an inch in because that's my seam allowance. So again, pin if you wish. Just go for it if you don't want to pin and we'll sew all the way around. Now we can turn the bag the right side out, I've left the zip open slightly, and you'll really see it coming together. So I'll press that shortly. When I do press, I like to press the seams together so it gives a crisper edge. It's looking good already. So it's time to make up the lining. Now you'll have made note of the length of your zip panel and the length of the end pieces. If you haven't, then you can measure those now. And cut your fabric to the same length, but half an inch wider from e for each piece. So my fabric here measures two inches. The fabric strips on the bag measure one and a half inches and this is folded over by a half an inch. I'm going to sew these pieces together with the end panels but so that the edges line up and there's a gap down the centre because that gap is going to be where your zip goes. So Oops. Line at the edge and so while that's there then I'll put the second side on so I don't need to pin it and sew straight across. So I have this and then we'll do the same on the opposite end. So there's the completed panel. Quicker than putting the zip in, wasn't it? Then we'll sew, just in the same way, the side panels to the linings. And this time I can mark the centre point simply by folding in half and creasing. You could put a little pen mark on there if you wish, but I've only used cotton for the lining so it creases very easily. Then we'll do the same with the zip panel. Crease there. And there. And then just as if we were sewing together the outer panel that had the zip, I'm going to sew these pieces together in the same way. So again, line up my markings. On all of these pieces I've sewn from this mark to the edge. So start in the centre, sew around here, start in the centre, sew around here. Um, and that way you know that you've got, if there's any kind of movement in the fabric, it's all going in the same direction. If you started at one end and then sewed all the way around, if there is any movement, you're pushing everything down to one end. It won't be even, you get a bit of a, a crooked bottom. So we'll sew these two pieces together and then the base will go in. So now we have the lining which just looks just like the outside apart from the lack of zip and we need to sew the base in just in the same way and no bagging out with this one, we don't need to leave a gap. So again line this up with the edge of the fabric so you're starting to sew a quarter of an inch in and we'll sew all the way around the base. All done. 
Now we need to sew the lining inside the bag. And the easiest way to do that is to turn the bag inside out. And then we'll have the lining the right side out. So the wrong sides are together. The wrong side of the bag is meeting the wrong side of the lining. Push the bag inside. And then we're going to hand sew the zip. It's a bit floppy, this lining. We're going to hand sew the zip panel around the lining. So you can see how our little box that we left open nestles really nicely across here. I do like to pin first here again just to make sure that the lining is sitting evenly and I'm going to sew so that I'm just covering over the stitches that I've already got on the zip. So that's going to keep it nice and neat. I'm going to start pinning at this end so my, my pins meet in the middle just to make sure it sits evenly. But you should have a perfect sized opening for the zip to sit inside. So it is a little bit time consuming sewing by hand but for this method it's the only way to do it and it's worth it because you get such a lovely finish. But to be honest, if this is going to be something that you're making for yourself, don't worry about your stitches being 100% neat, because this is on the inside after all. Right, so I'm all pinned around the one side. I'll take my needle and thread. And I'm just going to use a slip stitch. So I'll catch underneath the lining fabric with my needle, pull it through and then just tuck the knot out of the way and then I'm going to go into the zip just above that stitch line and then back into the fold of the fabric. So again right into the zip just above where uh, the stitches are, turn the needle around back into the fabric. So I should just cover over the zip so it's nice to have your stitches about a quarter of an inch apart because that'll be really neat, but don't measure them. So sit and relax for this one, maybe listen to an audio book for a while, have the TV on, don't rush it, this is relaxing, and sew all the way around. So I'm just coming now to the end of the second side and you can see how neatly that's all sitting. So again I'd give that a bit of a press, we'll turn it the right side out and we're finished. So there's your bag all finished. I hope you enjoy making yours. Um, if you do enjoy these projects, then why not subscribe to our YouTube channel and be notified of any new projects that come along. I shall see you very soon.